Right, so we're now going to go through the profiler. We're going to actually profile our particular motor here that we've got in front of us. And then we'll be using that profile in the rest of the hands-on as we go through the rest of the afternoon. This is one of the newer features added to the, uh, the workbench so that we can actually analyze the motor and calculate some of the variables inside. Not all Chinese motor manufacturers detail everything in their data sheets, as you may have experienced over the years, but there are a few parameters that you do actually need to know. So the profiler does actually need to be told one or two parameters and it can calculate the rest of the parameters for us. So we're moving through our flow chart now. So we're now on to the uh, motor characterization section. So the motor profiler, it's going to do an automatic characterization of our motor. And then we'll show you a few other bits and pieces doing the profiling features. So what do you need for a motor control application? What's the biggest key element for any motor control application? Yes, the motor. So that's the most important part. That's what we need to profile. What's the next element you need for the motor? So you do need a power stage somewhere as well. And as you said, you need a controller in there. So they're the key elements that you need for your motor. Now, if we look at the FOC parts, so field oriented control, what do you need to do FOC? So you need to know about the position and the current. So they're the two key things to do FOC control. You need the feedback parts. So you need to know certain features of what's going on. So apart from the hardware, you need some control algorithms. So you need some libraries of some sort to go inside there. You will need some signal flows to generate all those information for the power stage to drive the motor correctly. And you then need to look at things like back EMF and the feedback side of things so that you can actually position things correctly and control the motor efficiently. So these are all the elements that we need to now understand to make up our complete system. Profiling the motor and understanding what that motor is going to need from all of those other systems is a key part. You need to know what you need to do to drive your particular motor. So what the motor profiler does, it powers up the motor. It'll spin it a few times to analyze all the information uh, that it requires. Our kit's gonna do all this for us and we're gonna tell it exactly which type of power board we've got in there as well to drive our motor itself. You can do this all manually and this is how you normally had to do things previously. So you can observe all the parameters that you've got in the data sheet. We've got an online training for this. So we've already got a MOOC that was done by one of our motor control experts in our Prague office. So he's already done a, one of this for explaining this. There's a lot of maths involved in that part, doing this manually. So there's a lot of things you need to do. So you have to obviously connect it to oscilloscopes. You do quite a few trials of spinning the motor. You have to change things manually, test it again to see if it's improved, maximize the efficiency of your motor. So it can all be done manually if you want to. If our boards or algorithms can't do it, then you'll have to revert back to this particular way of doing things. So with the motor profiler, it's a nice easy task. You're gonna see it for yourself in a few minutes. It takes less than one minute to do all this. Whereas when you do it manually, it can take a few hours worth of uh, connecting various things. It'll do so many tests while the motor is stopped, which are all the elements, the current, the inductance of each of the uh, coils and windings that you've got inside your motor. Then we'll do an open loop test to work out the back EMF for the uh, sensorless state setup. And then we'll do the closed loop test inside there. So these are the three elements that we will do as part of the motor profiling procedure that goes on. So, as I said, the tool can do most things, but there's certain things it can't do, and these have to be done manually. So the number of pole pairs. This is one uh, test that we have to do manually, so it's not something the tool can automatically uh, figure out. We also need to know the maximum speed of the motor. So again, we need to know that limitation because the tool can't work that one out. It could try and crank the motor as fast as it can, but potentially it then damage the motor if it goes beyond whatever the maximum rating was. So we have to actually tell it the maximum speed as well. The current, so we need to know how much current to send through it. Again, if the automated system tries to do it, it could potentially damage the windings if it tries to send too much current through there. So there, those are the three key elements that we have to actually tell the tool what we need. The VBUS voltage, it can actually work this out. So you don't actually have to tell it. So we're going to, when we go into the profiling screen in a bit, we're going to leave that VBUS blank. So we'll let it work it out for that particular value. And 
we've got to uh, tell it the ratio as well. So, which is, I think it's one by default. And I think we're going to leave it as one for this particular motor as well. So the pole pairs, normally this is one of the bits of information that you do get on the data sheets of motors. So it normally tells you that. But again, we've written some uh, little firmware tests so that we can actually test this. So we can actually count the number of pole pairs. You can do it manually as well. So you can uh, get the uh, scope out to do it and check to see where they all are for the number of pole pairs. But we have a nice automated task that's going to help us do this in a second with the firmware that we've currently got inside. So as I said, it was already included in there. You just need to start the test. And if you remember my firmware diagram from earlier on, if you press and hold your blue button for three seconds, it'll put the motor into a specific test case. And then you can see how many pole pairs we've actually got inside our motor. So let's press and hold your button for three seconds. You'll feel it judder, the motor, as it goes into the test routine. And then you should feel a bit of resistance as you turn around your motor if you've got into the right mode. So, have we all agreed on a number? Everyone agreed on a number of pole pairs? So, hopefully you should have all have got seven as a number. So how many I managed to get on mine? So now we've got that number, we can open the motor profiler now. You can launch the motor profiler directly from the workbench, but you then have to close the workbench afterwards. So when you launch motor profile, you should get this screen. So the first item you need to do is you need to select your hardware that you're using. So you need to go and select the boards that you're using. So there's quite, as I say, the tool supports quite a lot of boards. This is still increasing uh, month by month. So there will be updates to the tool where we're increasing the number of boards that we've got. So it's IHM 16M1 free shunt board. If you want to see any of the product web pages for each of these boards, then there are quick links to it. So we will just select those boards and it now populates the hardware into what we're doing. Now we have to key in our pole pairs that we had, which was seven. Max speed for this particular motor is 1600. And the current that we're going to use is 0.15. And as I say, we can leave VBUS blank on this particular one. So I think ours, our power supply is less than what the motor can take. So this is why we'll leave it blank because it will automatically calculate whatever we're putting out. I think it's a 12 volt power supply that we would have anyway. Normally you'll be profiling the motor with known elements. So you'll profile the motor with a known drive stage rather than a custom drive stage because you want to actually understand the motor. Why would you try and use a custom board and an unknown motor in the same area? So you'd know, actually want to have some known drive stage to figure out the motor first before you then go and create this part yourself. So you want to know the parameters of the actual motor first. So it's best to do it with some known elements to actually calculate this. As you saw, we've got lots of boards at different drive stages there available to you. So these are again cover the different voltages of motors that you've got. So how many watts or kilowatts of motors you've got. So this is why we've got a collection of different boards available to you to test your motor. Remember, this is only the motor we're testing. Later on, when we get into the tool properly, that's when you can start using different power stages to drive the different motors in different ways. So once we've entered those parameters, we can now click connect. So we'll connect the communications link to our target board. You will potentially see some potential fault issues. So we've collected them all. The most common one is upgrade firmware. Pretty much everyone will get an upgrade firmware. We always seem to do it. Uh, I'm not sure if mine's actually told me that yet on my board. Did it flash up as well? Yep. So upgrade firmware is a common one. I did this test yesterday. It should have upgraded the firmware yesterday, but it needs it again. So if you upgrade the firmware, it'll go through. It'll uh, reprogram certain parameters back into the board to do that. And now it's ready for us to profile. The reason you get the upgrade firmware is because it's loading this, these parameters into the software that's in the board. So you should always probably get upgrade firmware every time you do this. But there, as I say, there are a few other error messages. You've got the slide there for you in your documentation to see what the other error messages are. So now if I click start profile, this is where it has to be really, really stable now, the actual motor. So make sure it's actually stable while it's doing these tests. And then you can start your profile. And the first thing it will go through is the electrical model. 
to work out your resistance and inductance. And then it will go into the mechanical testing. You normally get slightly different numbers because of potentially vibrations when it's trying to do the tests. Significantly different numbers is a bit strange. Each motor will have its own properties. There's no, there's no guarantee the Chinese, are, um, their quality assurance is going to be the same. So hopefully when you've uh, finished the profile, you usually get a KE of about 4.9-ish, give or take a bit, which is your um, constant for the motor. You've got your friction rating and your inertia. It should have calculated your max speed as well. Mine's 1590 there. And my voltage is 11.97. So it's a 12 volt power supply, so 11.97 is reasonably good calculation from the 12 volt power supply that we've got there. So if you notice my screenshot there, I was 4.92, they're 4.96. They've got 16.40 on their screen capture when they did this in the Prague office. I got 15.90 there on mine. So you will get slightly different parameters because every motor is slightly different. Uh, they've all got their own various properties. If you do it multiple times on your own same motor, you should in theory get near enough the same results every time. The algorithm will have a plus and minus tolerance each time. So if you want to test it properly now, you can play around with the motor. So if you hit the play button, you should be able to uh, control your motor there using the play to make sure now that you've profiled the motor, If the profile takes too long, it means that you've got an old board. Is the play working for you? Yep. I'll just check to make sure mine does. I'll start. There we go, yep. There we go. So that's fine. So once you've tested the play, then we need to save those parameters because we'll need them in the rest of the hands-on. So if you click on save and give it a name, so it's gimbal and I'll call mine COP because I've got one for every site I've done and save. So yeah, so you make sure you save it so that you know the location's automatic. It's saving in the correct location by default. Uh, and we'll use these parameters later on when we do project from um, scratch in the workbench later on. So, so I've just called mine Gimbal COP for Copenhagen so that I don't have conflict with uh, parameters I've chosen from different locations when I've been testing this and I've got the right motor. So you will get occasions where the motor is not recognized by the motor profiler. The correct voltage being applied potentially could cause a problem. We've just had a problem here where we put the wrong maximum speed in and again it didn't characterize the motor correctly as well. Normally if you've got the wrong voltage it means because you've got the wrong power board sometimes. Your motors can do far more than what your power board can deliver. So you've exceeded that board you need to try a different add-on shield to your Nucleo so that it's actually driving the correct rated motor that you've actually connected on the outside world. Or potentially it's the pole pairs that you've miscalculated when you've been testing the pole pairs. And that can again cause the problems where it can't characterize the motor. There's three parameters that you give it. Potentially the voltage, the pole pairs and the maximum speed. So if any of those three parameters are wrong, it doesn't actually characterize the motor correctly. So those are the three issues that you might see. There you go, that's the last one, the motor speed. And you might have to play around with that value so that you've exceeded the motor speed of what it was designed to work with. That's a key one. Make sure that motor is stable when you're doing this test because any inertial forces of it twisting on the desk can uh, mess up the readings. So that's the motor profile. So that's one module of this new system workbench tool that we have.